Welcome everyone, I'm Ricky from Tech Talk and today we're looking through the accessibility settings and features that we're going to find on the brand new Sony Xperia 5. When I went through the setup phase I found that there was an accessibility options there, also the volume key shortcut was also there as well that gave me talk back and I can show you that now. So if I press and hold the volume keys together. Tap back on. Talkback is a screen reader primarily for people with blindness and low vision. It allows interaction with the device using spoken feedback. Talkback tutorial. Lesson 1. Basic navigation, swiping, exploring, activating, in list 5 items. Lesson 2. Scrolling, scrolling forward and backward. Lesson 3. Talkback menus, global talkback menu, local talkback menu. Lesson 4. Text navigation, choosing text navigation settings. Lesson 5. Text editing activating an edit box, typing, moving a cursor, selecting and acting on text, home, button, out of list, home screen one of two, digital clock. So that was talk back and then what it done, because I started this for the initial time, the first time, it took me to its tutorial, which you can still go through and activate anyway in the settings. Gives you the different lessons of five different options to go through, learn how to use TalkBack, and then you can flow through your device so simply and so easily. So TalkBack will enable you to actually hear everything that's on your device or on your screen. You can do that with applications and also you can do that with widgets. So we can simply just tap. Phone, messages, Chrome, album, camera, my Vodafone, actions, shortcuts and notifications, remove, uninstall, move item, double tap to activate, double tap and hold to long press. So it lets me know what I need to do then to manipulate that application to use it to its best ability, or if I need to move it, or if I want to find out about notifications. Obviously I can highlight the actual time here. 10 o'clock, Monday the 4th of November, double tap to activate. So it tells me what I need to do if I want to change it. Also you can go up here to the top, you can go through the different settings up here. 1001 Android setup notification, Xperia services notification, side sense notification, software update notification, movie creator notification, phone three bars, battery 98%. So it lets me know everything that's in my taskbar. Obviously it will let me know about my notifications to manipulate. My Vodafone, YouTube home screen fingers. two of two, settings, paste, mute, cinema, discover, Google, the Galaxy 3 has appealed to the competition and markets authority, Chelsea, Man United. So that was talk back there, a very nice feature to have on a device to narrate everything back to you on your display, no matter what you want to look at and maybe whatever you need to actually get information on. Obviously to turn this off, you're going to use the volume keys again to turn off. Talk back off. Talk back is now off, but obviously you can change it in the settings. And that's where we're actually going to dive into is our settings here. So if I pull up our big menu of items, the settings icon is a gear icon. So in settings, what you need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's actually five from bottom. One, two, three, four, five. And it's called accessibility. And it has a little human figure with its arms and its legs standing apart from each other. So inside here, we have a range of different settings that we're going to go through. The first one is the volume key shortcut, as I've shown you. Obviously, you can choose the different options that you want to choose from and change and adjust to end in which best suits your ability but it's nice it has that option inside here also you can use on the lock screen another option compared to talkback is select to speak so if i toggle this on i'm going to hit ok you will then notice your accessibility man is down here in the bottom corner so you can tap him and you can press play navigate up select to speak use service on settings when select to speak is on, you can tap specific items on your screen to hear them aloud. So it'll read through the whole page for you. You can also do this another way. So if I press the accessible icon down here and then press here. When select to speak is on, you can tap specific items on your screen to hear them aloud. So it didn't start right at the top. It started at the selection of text that I pressed, which is a really handy feature. I can press stop. That will dismiss and then go away. Again, a really good option pairing these two together. So you have TalkBack that talks to you everything, no matter what you press, no matter where you are. Or you have Select to Speak, which is a little bit more selective of what you want to actually know about. You touch and you press and then you get to hear everything that you wanted to hear and highlight. Underneath that, you have Text to Speech Output. So inside here, you can change your speech rate and your pitch. So I can make it go really fast, which is very fast. I can make it go a bit deeper. 
So you can change and manipulate, you can press reset here. Obviously you can change languages as well, really helpful. And again, you'll manipulate this uh, to the speed you want it, the pitch you want it, depending on your ability, because some people can have it really quick or some people might need it a little bit slower. Underneath that you have font size. So mine's preset to the biggest option here. As it is quite a narrow, slim sort of design device from Sony Xperia here, I do appreciate having a larger text option available to me and it has a preset here. Also, we then have display size, which we could make a little bit bigger. And again, this makes it a little bit easier for me to read. So if you come back here, you've noticed the difference in size. Underneath that, we then have magnification. So inside here, you have magnify with triple tap. So we're gonna go in here, toggle on, one, two, three, three quick taps. You can also pinch in as well. And because it's an OLED panel, it's gonna look beautiful and pinpoint sharp. You can read your text here and you can zoom all the way in. Use two fingers to manipulate your way around your device, no matter wherever you want to go. And then also you can use that pinch in and out to zoom in and out. One, two, three to come back, three quick taps. There's also another variant. So one, two, three, and then hold on your third. And actually with this, you then you manipulate with one finger. You can see the time, you can see our notifications. I see my battery percent. I can come down and read the text. But as soon as I lift my finger off, it then goes to its standard size that it was preset to. Really good option to have here. So if I toggle that off, come back, then you have magnify with button. So toggle this on. Once toggled on, your accessibility man will come back. Press him, it will highlight in an orange box. Press here, and again, you can zoom in, and you can manipulate your way around the device. Tap your icon, and it will come back. Another great option there for magnification, and nice to see it's offered in different ways as well. So coming back, underneath magnification, you have color correction. So inside color correction, if we go inside here, you have a selection of different options to choose from and change and adjust, depending if your eyesight needs different light or you see certain colors or maybe you don't see other colors, but you have options here to change and adjust depending on you. So underneath that, you have color inversion. So color inversion gives a white text on a black background, but also inverts the other colors throughout your device as well. So please be aware of that. So if I just go here, Go tap then for it to dismiss. You can notice the difference here. It comes with its standard colors. So it's a good option if it helps you see in better color. Obviously it helps me with the menus as well to have a white text on a black background than having a black text on a white background. You also have a large mouse cursor. So if you want to use a mouse cursor to manipulate your way around your device, you can do. Underneath that, you have a remove animation so you won't get the flashy animations. It just toggles on and off, quite simple, and it removes the distraction if you need to be less distracted. Or potentially you won't see them anyway and you don't want them on your device. Underneath that, we have accessibility menu. So once toggled on here, hit OK. Once again, your accessibility figure is going to come down here at the bottom and it gives you a range of different options that you can use on the home screen or no matter wherever you are on your device. Plus you can add in other options as well, which I think is really key here but a really good option there to have because you can have the, like the large text you could have sort of the talkback feature the select to speak option you can have switch access different options that are available to you talking about switch access this is a great feature this is where you can use switches and interaction controls with your smartphone to manipulate it and use your device no matter whatever way you want to obviously it's going to take us through the setup process here but obviously we don't have one but just look at the amount of settings that you can change and adjust depending on your need and also your ability as well. But it's a really good feature to have this switch access available on smartphones. I'm really pleased to see it's on about 95% of accessibility settings now that we make on the channel. I see this option in the settings. I'm really pleased to see that. It's a great option. And if you do have a switch or an interaction device with your smartphone, let me know how you get on as well. I'm really intrigued to know from you. Underneath that, if you decided to use a large mouse pointer, you might this option as well, which is click after mouse cursor stops moving. So obviously you can change and adjust the time here depending on your choice. That's all about using a mouse cursor with your smartphone. I think it's a really good option to have on here. Underneath that, then you have another option, which is a little bit confusing to me. This is the power button can end calls. So where it's a little bit confusing is if you look down the right hand side, there is a mass amount of buttons. At the top, first of all, you've got your volume controls. Then you have your side mounted fingerprint sensor. You then have a power button and then you have your camera button down here. 
and it is really confusing because there is no textual difference or no color difference. The only one thing is where the, your fingerprint sensor is, it sort of concaves inwards, so it diverts inwards into the actual device. And sadly, that's the only difference between all of these buttons on here. Yes, it's nice to have the power button to end the calls, but sadly, it's quite hard to figure out which is your power button. So you have volume controls, fingerprint sensor, power button, then camera button. Underneath that, you have auto screen rotate, so your device will auto rotate depending on what applications you're in and obviously what you're doing with your device. Underneath that, you have touch and hold delay, so you have the options of short, medium or long, depending on which best suits you. Underneath that, you then have vibration, so you won't see this option too many times in accessibility, but you have different options in here. So you have ring and notification, so it can be on that one, and also touch vibration as well when you're using your keyboard or manipulating your way around your device. Underneath that, you then have mono audio. So if you need to use mono audio or you only hear through mono audio, you can do. One other great feature that I'm really pleased to see on here is captions. So you've got languages, you've got a range of different languages that you can choose your caption to be in. You also have text size again, a range of different text size, and also you have the caption style. Again, six different options to choose from, depending on what best suits you. And finally at the bottom here, we've got high contrast text. So if I toggle this on, you'll notice the text went from blue to black once toggled on. But again, it just makes it a little bit easier to read, a little bit more easier to understand. So coming back, that was all the accessibility settings. So there are some other settings in display section. So let's go to the top here and we're gonna go into display. So display is orange in color and it's one, two, three, four, five, six from the top. So in the side display here, we've got different options that I want to go through. The first one is image quality settings. And again, you can change and adjust the way you want your display to look. You also have your white balance as well. This is where you can change and manipulate the different colors of your display. If you need an overlay or different options, so I can make it a green tinge here, if that helps as well. Or I can actually bring that right down and bring the blue up if I need a blue tinge over the display, making it a little bit easier to read. It just depends on people's choice, really, what they prefer to use. So it is really up to you. So you can have warm, you can have medium, you can have cool, or you can have custom. So it really depends what options best suit you. We then have our brightness level. So you have a brightness level up here, very bright, and obviously being an OLED panel as well, it means that it will be bright as well in the daylight and also at night time. But obviously I do recommend using a night mode at night time, just taking away that harsh or blue light. You also have adapted brightness as well. So you can choose to have adapted brightness and this will automatically change depending on your light source. Again, a really good option to have as well. Also inside here, you're gonna find font size and display size that we found in accessibility. Underneath that, you have one-handed mode. So let's toggle this on. Double tap the home button and it'll shrink down to the corner for you. And then you can use this with one hand if you want to. Obviously, as it's quite a narrow device, it's quite easy to actually manipulate with one hand anyway. But it just depends on your hand size. One other option is night light. So night light is quite good. You can turn this on and it actually, what it does, takes away that harsh blue light that I said about late at night time. Really recommend that you use this as well to protect your eyes. And it does remove that harsh blue light so you don't actually get distracted. And also it makes you go to sleep a lot easier. So as you can notice, if I turn that off there, it becomes that harsh, bright white light and blue light, which is actually the more damaging one. Then finally, you've got device theme as well. So currently we've got automatic based on wallpaper. You have light option, which is preset to, and also you have a dark option as well. So now it's in dark, we go home, toggle down. Our menu options are darkened. Our interface is darkened. Obviously, if I come over this side, this is still white. So it doesn't make it an overall dark thing, which is a little bit disappointing. Obviously, when you go into the menus as well, if we go up here into our main menu, it sort of stays the same as well, which is a shame. So that was all the accessibility settings and features that we find on the Xperia 5. So when I previously looked at a Sony Xperia device, I can't remember which one it was, in fact, but it was really sad and disappointing to note that a lot of the accessibility settings had been removed. They just physically wasn't on the device, and it wasn't just my device. Range of devices that Sony just left out accessibility settings, which is such a shame, which means that I couldn't recommend that device to them. I'm pleased to say 
Sony have fixed it, it's working really well. I'm pleased to say that I could easily recommend this device to someone now. If they had an accessible need and really liked the Sony device and wanted the Sony device, that's great. One thing from me though, being visually impaired and the ability that I need from a device is that I need a large screen. And also I like quite a wide screen here. This is very narrow. So if I bring in my Oppo Reno 2 that I've got as well, which is this device here, you can just see how much wider it is. It's just a shame that Sony have gone such a narrow design, but that's okay. It depends on people's choice and people's preference. But if you do have any accessible need and you do want a Sony smartphone, you can get the Sony Xperia 5 here as it does have enough accessibility features and settings to be used by everyone, I hope. If you have any questions or any queries, please drop a comment down below. So while you're leaving a comment down below, please like the video and also subscribe to Tech Talk UK One to stay updated with all of my latest videos. And for me, Ricky and the Sony Xperia 5, I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.